In this problem, we're told human centrifuges are used to train military pilots and astronauts in preparation for high-G maneuvers. A trained, fit person wearing a G-suit can withstand accelerations up to about 9G or 88.2 meters per second squared without losing consciousness. A, if a human centrifuge has a radius of 4.5 meters, what angular speed results in a centripetal acceleration of 9G? And B, what linear speed would a person in the centrifuge have at this acceleration? So basically, you have the centrifuge, and it's going to have a radius of 4.5 meters, and we know the maximum acceleration a person can experience within it, right, is uh, 88.2 meters per second squared. Right, so I think to solve this problem, the easiest way is just starting with B, and so we're going to use the information from B in order to solve A. So let's just start with B. So for B, we're trying to find the linear speed a person in the centrifuge would have at this acceleration. So the acceleration they're talking about is 88.2 uh, meters per second squared. Right, so what we want to do is find V given A, right? So it's going to have A inside of it. And so there's a formula you should know, which is centripetal acceleration is equal to V squared over R, right? And so if we multiply both sides by R, right? And then you just get V squared equals RAC. And then V is basically just the square root of R times the centripetal acceleration, right? And so what does this mean? If we plug in, right, we're trying to find the velocity at this centripetal acceleration with a radius of 4.5 meters, right? So all we have to do is just plug it in this formula, and that's going to give us the velocity. So if you go ahead and do this, square root 88.2 times the radius, which we know is 4.5. So go ahead and plug this in, 88.2, or the square root of 88.2 times 4.5 you're going to get V equals 19.922, right? So you can just round, you can say 19.9 if you want. So 19.9 .9 and then linear velocity is measured in meters per second. So this is your answer to B, right? So this is the linear velocity at the acceleration, right? 88.2. So this is V or your answer to B. So now given B, we can go ahead and solve for A. So for A, we're trying to find uh, the angular speed with a centripetal acceleration of 9g, right? So essentially what we're trying to do is, last time we found uh, the linear velocity at this acceleration, but now what we're trying to do is find the uh, angular speed with this acceleration, right? But we know this acceleration has a velocity of 19.9, .9, right? So we can either choose to relate it in velocity or centripetal acceleration. And I think the easiest way to do this is to, uh, just to know velocity is equal to r omega, right? And if you divide by r, you'll get omega is equal to the velocity divided by r. And what's the velocity when the centripetal acceleration is 88.2, it's 19.9. .9. So what we can do is just plug this in for V and then divide by the radius, right? So that's exactly what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna plug in the more exact version. So 19.922 divided by R, which is 4.5. So plug this in, 19.922 divided by 4.5. When you do this, you'll get omega equals 4.427. So you can round this however you want. You can just say 4.43. And then the units are going to be in what? Radians per second, right? That's how we measure angular velocity. So omega or the angular velocity is 4.43 radians per second, right? It's going to result in this centripetal acceleration, right? So this is your answer to A. This is your answer to B. And yeah, hopefully you found this useful.